good afternoon ayushi fantastic yeah. to see you. you and i must say i'm very excited to actually interview you the founder of faber street a brand which i i think my half the wardrobe is full of faber street creation so very very excited about this and i must say that everybody amongst my friends my cousins everyone was so excited to know that i'm actually interviewing ayushi gudwani oh my god this is like really great moment so um, ayushi so, you know, so sweet ayushi i'll come straight to the point i mean i'm so glad that we are doing this interview of 100 women of impact and and the best part is that your venture is impacting for so many women women like us who are on the move who are on the go and uh, and i think it's a a boon in disguise to actually find some good work clothes which actually fits indian body types so without you know getting into the whole thing i i'm very curious to know how did this whole inspiration for faber street came about because last what i knew was before that you were doing a typical 9 to i would say not so 9 to 5 job because you were working with couple of consulting firms and they were purely from 9 to midnight kind of a job but 18 hour work almost 18 hour work i know i have been in yeah. one of those so i can understand uh, but how did this whole idea came across so i mean i think uh, probably once you've worked in consulting for a particular amount of time we all think what next and for me the idea was i wanted to do something and i i was sure that i didn't want to stay in consulting long enough and i wanted to ensure that i'm doing something of impact which is something that i can build and is also larger than life and can drive impact at much larger scale um so that is how i thought about women's uh, apparel as a space primarily because i i've been a consumer and uh, there haven't been a lot of brands which are who has offered great fits for consumers uh, so i was excited about that as a space and then i also assessed whether there is market and there is adequate opportunity to build a multi billion dollar business since both of them converged that is how you know fable street came into being and that's how i decided to quit mckinsey and set this up you know transitioning from a typical secure so called secure corporate life job to a roller coaster ride of an entrepreneur take us through what kind of thoughts what kind of process you went through self doubts self challenges anything else which you might want to share for some of the audience over here so a couple of thoughts and you are taking me back to my 2015 2016 days almost 7 years um, ago um i think i there is always a self doubt and a question are you the right person to do it and why will your venture succeed as opposed to when you you always know that one in 10 or maybe one in 20 startups succeed right so there's always a question around that so you have to make adequate comfort and conversation with yourself to be able to answer that question i think that is one thing um that i went through a phase and it took me a couple of months to take a stand that you know i have to go and do it and this is something that makes a lot of sense um the second thing that i also realized was that you know most of the times we think of entrepreneurship at as risk we always call it you know it's riskier safe and secure job as opposed to um you know trying to do entrepreneurship you will have no income etc but now when i look back and even back then one of the core decision thought process for me or uh, some people in our place should be that you know we are in a job which is very secure and which is very safe we are well educated so if we try take a break for a couple of years it is really not a risk if let's say the venture doesn't work then you can always go back to the job all you lose is a couple of years your npv in terms of the financial jargon doesn't change because it's your long term journey right um but if it works then you will never look back so it is literally for people like us actually almost zero risk we have the opportunity to go back to work we will always find jobs it's just a mindset it's just the fact that we compare ourselves to a peer and feel insecure about it and if you get rid of that i think it's a fabulous journey and absolutely a journey worth taking lovely and you know this is one question in my mind that you are an engineer then you did your mba then you went into consulting and now you are leading up a, a very very successful fashion lifestyle brand a um, lot of people will say what you're doing right now has nothing to do with what you did earlier um, was that a yes. challenge was that an advantage 
a lot of people, you know, ask these questions in their mind that what I did learn in the school or the college or by work should relate to my next innings. But I, I, what, what was the things which basically helped you to transition? Or was it any a big challenge that you didn't know anything about it? So I would actually think of this not as a challenge, but as an opportunity. End of the day, you know, um, A, while I did diverse set of things around it, I do have a business background, which is what my MBA trained me and taught me. And then eventually moving on to McKinsey and doing consulting, what you do is you get holistic understanding of all aspects of business. So at some level, I would say that actually my training was to figure out how to build a business. What I did not know, of course, were the technicalities of running an apparel business, but that's always a journey to learn. So, um, so there was a lot more excitement that I am actually the most competent to do it as opposed to others. So that part gave me the confidence and comfort. At the same time, I'm also... Um, you know, a learner. And I always believe that at each stage in life, you're consistently learning. So while there was a challenge of understanding the technicalities of apparel as a business and going through the journey of understanding that space and sector, um, and also solving sizing, right? If I have to ask you this, what is the biggest learning you would say in this, in this whole journey has been for you? Or even from your success or some of the failures, if you would want to share? I, I mean, I think my learnings have been very cliched. It's just that I've gone through the journey so I can actually assimilate and believe that these are the most important learnings. I think the most important one has been that, you know, entrepreneurship or running a business is a marathon. It is not a sprint. So by, by working hard or working tight for a couple of months or a short duration is not the win. You have to build a business which is profitable, sustainable, and you have to plan by ensuring that this is a long-term journey, it is not going to be a short-term journey. And that's been one of my biggest learnings as I think about it and uh, running around this. The second um, learning is the ecosystem that you create for you to build a business and support, which includes actually for first and foremost is your team and then are your well-wishers and your advisors, et cetera. They matter the most you're spending almost 60 to 80% of your days with them. And they can be a cause of happiness or they can be a cause of stress. And uh, as I said, that since it is a marathon and you need to think about it in long term, so you need to be consciously building that ecosystem. And I usually, you know, you, you said it so well that building that ecosystem and the people who surround you the most, which is your team, your well-wishers and everyone else can be the cause of concern or the cause of happiness both. So you have to be very selective for whom you choose to be surrounded by the most. Um, but what would you attribute, what skills would you attribute to yes. actually make those right choices? What do you think makes a great leader or what are the skills you think you have been able to, skills, competencies, you feel that you've had been able to, um, you know, you would attribute it for building that kind of an ecosystem around you. I would say uh, three things. Uh, one is you being an inspirational leader or someone someone wants to emulate. And that is a journey you take. You figure out what are your personal leadership traits and what people appreciate you in you and you ensure that you amplify them. Um, the second is that by design, as I think about my leadership capabilities and also building a team, I've always built a team which shares common value system and that's what allows us to, you know, hold together our approach to doing things. When, when I say common value systems, it is a set of underlying values. We have all the drive. We have all the excitement to build businesses. We, uh, we trust each other. And that's what it is. We do come from very diverse a set of backgrounds so it's not about common backgrounds but common value system which has uh, allowed us to ensure that you know we've built a fabulous stream um, along the journey so I think these are the two things as you think about building your team and a set of people and third uh, is again a conscious choice of uh, building an ecosystem and a set of people who you want and like working with and you'll identify it with time um, and that's a work in progress for us even today and hopefully will always remain you know switching gears to this um, you know the biggest challenge it has been proven by the statistics as well as the kind of funding or the kind of numbers is that women-led startups do not attract very good funding 
uh, you have proven in many a time strong and you have, I would say, um, been able to break that so-called glass ceiling. Yes. Um, did you, so my first question to you would be, did you face any challenge on that front? And if yes, um, what would, if you would like to share or if no, what do you think has been that X factor which helped you to break that clutter? Thank you for that question. And um, I would say at least on the face of it, I have really not faced a lot of issues in fundraising. Um, if, if there are any conversations at the back uh, with a lot of people, then there are adequate people who also appreciate what we have built to give us funds. Um, so I've probably been an exception in the ecosystem, I would say. Um, the reason I'm very confident of why I um, I get this and how people look at it is that there are fundamental common values that anyone is looking forward in an entrepreneur. Uh, if you have significant, strong business acumen, do you have a team which can deliver? And what is your drive and aspiration? And I do feel given my pedigree, how we have built the business, how we have scaled the business, how we've built it profitably and also if you look at the team that we have built um, anyone who will do a ref check on us will never you know have an iota of doubt on why we are the best business to invest in so in our case the reason we've broken this glass ceiling or if it any if that exists is because we are just doing it right and building it right and in that context there is no gender that comes into play you have to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to be responsible for your decisions, whether they are right or not. You take accountability for them. And that's a very hard journey that you have to go through. And you have to build an art that you're making decisions at an hourly or minute levels at times. And that's an important challenge I faced personally. And I took a lot of time to overcome it. Today, I'm very comfortable and confident in decision-making. I have built intuitiveness and I also process a lot of information information and data very fast to do it. Ayushi, thank you so much for your time and as well as sharing some of those experiences and insights. Before we check out any one line you would want to share with our, you know, especially the younger audience, the young girls and women out there who want to pursue STEM, who want to pursue entrepreneurship, who want to break the glass ceiling, any message, any voice of inspiration for them? I just go by this one saying all the time, think big, start small, execute fast. That's the game changer. And it is agnostic to gender. Anyone who does this right is what will get funded or is will drive a successful business.